Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My P.I. Dream. Another beautiful morning here in the Philippines. We just got some cloud cover, giving us a little bit of relief from that heavy morning sun that we normally get here during this time of year. Now, today's episode, I think you are going to find very exciting. Uh, today's episode is being done because of you, because of your comments, because of your suggestions. Uh, you know, I always read all those comments inside the comment section, and many times you all send a question that says, James, have you ever tried this, or have you ever tried this? Or what do you think of this product? Well, some of you sent in some suggestions for a particular product that I saw online. I ordered it, I received it, and we are going to put it into action starting today. So I hope you find today's episode interesting. Now without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Now you're probably asking yourself, James, what are these two plastic things that you have sitting on your chair back here on Bahay Kubo Island back here? Well, these are something that you guys recommended. You said, or you made a comment, or you asked the question, James, have you ever shaped your watermelon or any of your melons inside your garden? And I said, what? What do you mean by shaping? <laughs> and many of you said, oh, there's a technique out there, which I did some research on. Uh, there's a technique, and I believe it was started in Japan, uh, where you put, you put your melons, like your watermelon, inside a plastic container, then you seal it, and then your watermelon conforms to the shape of the plastic container. It's a specifically designed a uh, plastic container that has these ribs that give it some strength so as the watermelon grows uh, it doesn't bust it doesn't break your container and it conforms it grows to the shape of the container which this is a square container right here uh, they have many different shapes they even have shapes that have face designs like the face of Frankenstein and uh, uh, things like that they have heart shapes they have many many different shapes and they have different sizes for different types of fruits uh, that and vegetables that you can put inside of these devices. So anyway, these came in. These came in from Lazada. Here, let me go ahead and open open one of these right here, and I'll show you. Now, I did some research, and I tried to find some of the best prices. And uh, on Lazada, uh, the prices weren't too bad, uh, but I'll tell you uh, the difference between ordering on Lazada and like ordering the same device when you buy it like on Amazon.com in the US. But anyway, here's what it is. It comes into two pieces. It's two pieces. And what you do, you would put your melon in one side. Then you would enclose your watermelon inside. Then you have to put some bolts, some uh, basically like screws and nuts around to hold this thing nice and tight and in place uh, while it sits inside. And as the watermelon grows, it will conform to the shape of the container, which is a square. And then before it gets too big and breaks this, you go ahead and open it and you remove the, uh, the melon. And it will be the shape, it will be a square. You will have a square melon. Now, does that make the melon taste any better? I, I doubt it. I doubt it changes any of the characteristics other than the shape, but it's interesting. Uh, and also gives a little bit of protection inside the container here. So what we're going to do is we are going to start, and this will be multiple days with this episode right here, but it will be all in today's episode. We'll combine, we'll join through the miracle of editing. We'll put them all together. Now, well, I was going to tell you about a little bit of a comparison, the comparison between like Amazon.com uh, in the US or Amazon.ca in Canada or wherever around the world and buying from Lazada here in the Philippines. When you buy these, and I checked all of the vendors, every single one of the vendors, uh, except for maybe one that had a very high price, uh, they don't come with the hardware. All you get are these two plastic, the two plastic molds right here, the mold. You do not get the, the screws, the bolts that you need to actually hold these things together. So what I had to do, I had to go to a hardware store yesterday and I picked up a bag of washers and screws and nuts. You can see them right here. They, 
they look something like this. So I found this in a local hardware store. Uh, so we're going to use these to secure the, the container together and hold the watermelon inside. Uh, I don't know why they don't include the hardware because the only way to make this work is you have to have the plastic, you have to have the screws, nuts and washers, and you have to have the watermelon. Why would you sell an incomplete package? Well, anyway, let's go back to the garden and take a look and see how we can put the melon in. Speaking of Lazada. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you for Thank you Now we get a lot of stuff from Lazada, but I'm going to say that 90% is for Ness from Ayasawa. So, Ness. Ness, Ness. Okay, now back here at the raised bed garden. I selected a melon right now. You could start, it's very small, but I'm, I'm trying to get this video done as quick as possible. So this watermelon right here is the perfect size that fits easily inside this container right here, uh, but it's gonna be very close uh, to starting to spread and starting to conform to the shape because it's almost the size of the inside dimensions of this container. Uh, I have a screwdriver. I have a little nut driver right here. And that's really all I need besides the hardware, which are the screws, the washers, and the nuts. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and put this melon inside this container. Now the container, it has a little notch built right here. And this notch is where you put the vine. So the vine will go through here, the melon will go inside, and then this will allow the, the vine itself to continue feeding the melon. So it's gonna go like this. Right here. And you have to be careful not to break, not to break your vine. And then we'll put the top. Now the top has some notches in it. You want to make sure the notches, there's a notch on this side and a notch on this side. You want to put them on opposite sides. All right, so the only other thing we need to do is secure, secure this, these two pieces, the lid and the, the bottom section with all these bolts and nuts and washers and uh, and then we'll let it sit here. All right, now this is ready. It's good to go. I have it secured with all the, the nuts and the washers and the screws all the way around. Uh, you can see over here, the vine is going in through this hole. What's nice about this, it has ventilation holes and holes to drain in case you get moisture. So it's along here along each one of these corners it has a way for condensation and moisture to get out uh, what I found I found it uh, and I think it's best is to only use maybe like a nut driver I, or I just use the extension off of my socket set and not use the screwdriver because it gets tight if you can get these tight hand tight all the way around uh, I'm concerned I think that's enough I'm concerned that if you over tighten these on these plastic uh, you might break it and the, the main idea is to have a good seal compression all the way around So we're gonna leave it at that. So what's inside there? I need to find one more melon. I think I see a melon like right there uh, so we'll probably do and then we'll go ahead and Install the second one inside there, and then I think we'll call it a day All right, so our second our second watermelon is in place it's secured inside the square container uh, so we're good I decided to choose a smaller one this time instead of using the larger one plus it's in the middle this one is really easy to access and we can we can view it a lot easier here in this portion of the garden there's plenty to select from I just want to show you we looked at some of our cucumbers the other day but we got a bunch more cucumbers that are about ready to pick you got this one I don't know if you can see the one right over there this one there about ready to pick uh, they're just they're growing There's another one back here the, 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 the cucumbers are growing like crazy back here. I need to learn. I need to learn how to do pickling I haven't done I, I have family that does pickling 
make pickle from cucumbers. I, I need some of their expertise because I love pickles and I don't think they do pickles much here in the Philippines. Now I think what we're going to do today so that we can release today's episode, I think we're going to release it at this state that we have right now with the watermelon inside the container, uh, not yet developed to the shape of the uh, the plastic container itself. We'll do that. We'll do a follow-up. We'll do a follow-up episode. Uh, I think one of them will be ready in about a week. I'm going to say about a week. I also have two other projects that are going back, and these are back here in the backyard, and these are long-term projects. Uh, so I'm not going to release that information yet, uh, but I will let you know if it's a success or a failure. It's one of those kind of things. I have one of these things I'm trying to disprove, like a myth buster. Uh, some people say you can't do this certain kind of a uh, process, and I'm trying it. Uh, I, like I said, I have to find out for myself. Can you do it? Uh, and why can't you do it if you can't do it? I think you understand. Uh, so those are two. We have two projects back here in this area right here uh, that we'll be uh, presenting in the next few weeks. Uh, anyway, I, let's do one quick walkabout and then we'll close for today's episode. And just a quick update on our little island that we've finished last week back here. Everything is doing really good. Everything looks real healthy. It likes the combination of the chick manure and the rice hull and the plain rice hull for the mulch on the top. These uh, this is our squash up here. I know they're going to get big, but I think we'll trim them back. As soon as we start getting a few uh, s the squash blossoms, we'll cut it back so it doesn't take over this entire island. I really don't have any more space over there. Uh, so like I said, this is going to be a mixture. and Everything seems to be adapting very good here. Now the lavender from around the edge of the garden here by the fence, I started taking clippings. Remember I told you I was going to use clippings from that to propagate some more. Now, two or three days ago, I started that. I cut off about a dozen, about a dozen little clippings. And although it looks a little rough right here, uh, believe me, it will come back. This one is actually doing real good, but they will come back. I did some there, uh, and I did some over here. So I'm sure these will come in. The lavender actually likes really bright, bright sun sunlight. So it will come in, it will get a little bit thicker, and then we'll even take clippings off of these as they grow. And we'll make like a bunch. We'll do a little bunch inside here to do a little feature along with our, our, our border plants that we have inside here and the strawberry and our palms. And this is, oh, that's the Michelle. Somebody was asking in one of the comment section, where did you put Michelle's pineapple plant? Oh, it's right there. Now, all of our chili pepper plants are doing really good. You don't really see any red ones. You can kind of see where I pulled off. Last night, Ness made synagogue and she has this kind of sauce it's like a soy sauce and you put chili peppers you mix it inside there and uh, so i cut off i pulled all the red chili peppers that we had back here so that was really nice that accented our synagogue last night uh, also see these are doing well these are the this one's still a little small uh, these are chili, uh, additional chili peppers and these are what you find uh, sometimes when your chili pepper, when you don't harvest and they fall to the ground, they start little seedlings and these seedlings turn into regular chili pepper plants. Uh, so I continued these. I want two rows of chili peppers because we, we eat a lot of chili peppers around here. And today, this wall of craziness growth needs my attention. And I have, I have uh, you see this? This is a watermelon. <laughs> So we're going to take the net, the netting, and we're going to secure up underneath the bottom and make like a cradle for it. Uh, but we're going to be growing watermelons on this vertical wall. And our mandarin oranges are doing great on the mandarin orange tree back here. Uh, everything else in the yard is doing fantastic. Uh, the grass is growing so quick. I cut this grass about nine days ago. I, I'm probably going to end up cutting it today or tomorrow. Uh, bluegrass, which is the variety here, a lot of people ask me the question, what type of grass are you using there? Uh, this is bluegrass. Remember I said there's basically four kinds of grass, carabelle, uh, frog grass, rye, and bluegrass. And uh, the least maintenance grasses are the carabao and the frog grass. Uh, the most maintenance, I'm going to say, is this, is the bluegrass. But it's also uh, very, I mean, it's just great. It's like you, you step in and it feels, when you put your feet inside, it feels like 
carpet. It takes more maintenance, but if you're a yard person, uh, you won't mind doing that. Plus, remember the clippings. The clippings that you get from your grass here, you collect that, and it makes great, it makes great compost when you mix it in with your soil, and it also can act like a mulch layer on the top, which is what we use over in the raised bed garden. Uh, so it, it's a trade-off, but if I had to do it over again, I would still, uh, I would still opt for the, the bluegrass. I really like bluegrass. Again, it, <laughs> I think I have to cut this today. Well, I think we're going to close from back here in the backyard now. But before we do close today's episode, I just want to bring up a couple of points. Uh, and I know they're in the back of my mind, so I have to try to uh, go with the old-time database. Rewind the wheel, uh, the tape wheel, because <laughs> this is not the new digital uh, technology. Mine is the old analog log technology here. What was I trying to remember today? Oh, well, we're going to start. We're going to start with one thing that I have failed to mention over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we recently went over the 30,000 mark on our subscriber base. Uh, we're actually well over the 30,000. We're starting to move towards the 40,000 on the subscriber base. And I want to thank you, you the viewer, you the subscriber for sharing that with other people and giving some awareness of what our channel is all about. I want to thank you very much uh, for getting us to, to this point right here. Uh, so we, we're over 30,000. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to share with you, we have some exciting episodes coming up here in the near future and that is with regard to doing some testing some testing inside the backyard uh, myth busters uh, you might you might want to say sometimes people write in I might make a comment that I, I'm going to try something then people will write in and say you can't do that but they don't really leave an explanation sometimes of why you can't do a certain thing uh, so I'm gonna try to do some things inside the backyard uh, and see can you not do it or can you do it? Is it a process improvement or is, does it make things worse? We'll share that information as well. Uh, it seems like there were some other things that I wanted to talk about as well. I don't know. I, I'm sure there was and I always forget and I try to remember it in upcoming episodes. Well anyway, for all of those who have you been sending in great comments, I thank you. Uh, for all those subscribers who uh, have our new subscribers here, I thank you and uh, we will continue to grow the channel uh, and, and spread the joy and the kindness and uh, the DIY things that we do here inside the backyard. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, please share, and if you haven't subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day. testing that we're doing right here uh myth busters myth myth bus myth bus am i uh am i lisping or am i saying it right myth bus <laughs>Enjoy today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well